Have you ever wondered if being focused really makes a difference in your life? We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But first, thanks for joining us at Hope Online today. I'm Gerald, one of the pastors, and it really means a lot to me that you're here. Now, do something for me, if you would, just really quickly. Hit those like and subscribe buttons below. By doing that, you help us extend our online reach and people can hear the good news about Jesus. And then also, you need to know this, your giving is central to us being able to maintain our online presence. And so if you can give, give as generously as you can, it will make a huge difference. There are three ways you can do that. You can text your gift to 84321, or you can go online at hopepd.org, just click the button that says give, or you can always mail your gift to uh, Hope Lutheran Church, 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. But just know this, however much you give and however you give, you're making a difference by giving and by worshiping through giving. Now, does, uh, does being focused really make a difference in your life? Well, let's find out together right after this. I grew up in Kentucky, and you know what that means? Well, one of the things that means is not only do I not mind a fight, every now and then I enjoy one, even if I have to start it. Just kidding about that. Uh, that's not true now, but wow, that was a perfect picture of my elementary and junior high school years. A couple of years ago, I reconnected with a friend from junior high through social media. His name is Mike, and one day he made a post that really resonated with me. So I commented on it, I'm proud of you, Michael. Who would have thought two boys who were fighting with each other in junior high would agree on so much as aging men? And so right there online, we started reminiscing about a fight that we had. Now, I'm not talking about a disagreement. I'm talking about an actual fight, fists and blows and bruises. I mean, the tensions had been brewing all day at school. The news was circulating through whispers among junior high kids. Fight after school, fight after school. Mike and Gerald, fight after school, be there. And when the final bell rang, there was a crowd of kids that followed us across the street to the backyard of a nearby house. To start the fight, we went to the middle of a circle of kids that had formed. We shook hands, and as soon as our hands released, I swung because I knew that was probably my only chance to get a punch in. Here's why. During our uh, social media reminiscing, Mike wrote this. You got, uh, you got in a really good first lick. My cheeks stung for a couple of days, but I had you by six inches and 50 pounds. I got on top and it was over fast. Well, <laughs> that's exactly how I remember it too. You see, Mike was the nephew of an NFL player and the genes ran in the family. I was a scrappy, skinny kid who could bench press about 17 pounds if I had someone spotting me. But I was there and ready for the fight. Besides the fact that kids should never fight like that, uh, or adults for that matter, just a little free advice there, because it's totally unacceptable behavior. The other problem is that what we were fighting about apparently didn't matter. I know that because here's what Mike wrote. Still can't remember what it was about, but at 12 years old, must have been critical. And I can't remember what the fight was about either. By the time we got to the fight, it was just about the fight. We'd lost our focus. We'd lost the cause. You know, there are issues and causes and concerns in life that are worth our time, our energy, our attention, worth fighting the right ways for. But the only way to know what those are and how to fight for them is if we stay focused. Because if we let distractions divert our focus, we'll just be out there fighting long after we've forgotten what the fight was about. That's why as we continue our teaching series today, it's the heart that matters, where we've been investigating the heart of a man named David, one of the greatest kings of Israel, and how his heart guided how he lived, that this week we're zeroing in on the focused heart. 
Today, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit the rewind button and go back to a story that Pastor Rick took a look at in week three. A story you likely know even if you've never been in a church. The story of David, a young shepherd boy, and Goliath the giant. Quick recap of the story. The Israelites are in a battle with the Philistines. The Israelites are the good guys and the Philistines are the bad guys. I mean, really bad guys. Imagine the worst people you can think of, like New York Yankees fans. <laughs> oh, just kidding, I, I, I meant to say Houston Astros fans. But seriously, the Philistines are bad. I mean, you read the story and you want them to lose. There's a battle happening, but David isn't even a soldier, he's a shepherd. The fight has been going on for weeks with no progress. David's father, Jesse, gets concerned about his three sons who are in the army. So he sends David out to, to them with uh, something like three Subway BMT double meat, double cheese footlongs, Panda Express orange chicken Beijing beef and walnut shrimp, and a Costco pumpkin pie. Now, for some of you, I just made you hungry, didn't I? Well, David gets to the battlefield and he sees his brothers falling into the battle line for the day. He leaves the food and runs to his brothers. And while he's talking with his brothers, Goliath the giant comes out and the Israelites all fall back. They're afraid of him, but not David. And you know the ending of the story. With just a sling, David buries a stone in Goliath's forehead and kills him. And when Goliath hits the ground, David runs over to him, pulls Goliath's sword and cuts off his head, which goes to prove that because David was focused, he knew how to get ahead. <laughs> Bad, huh? But before David fought the battle with the sling and stones, he had to fight a battle with distractions that could have shifted his focus. What we often miss in this story is that David's focus didn't start on the battlefield. In the middle of the fight, it started before that. You see, there's a battle before the battle, a fight before the fight, where David has to stay focused or the battle would have been lost long before David ever stood in front of Goliath. So let's hit the rewind button and go back a little farther in the story to an encounter between David and his oldest, oldest brother Eliab before David fights Goliath. Because this whole story would have turned out very differently if David had not had a focused heart. Okay, let's rewind, here we go. Before David fights Goliath, he's standing there at the battle line when the soldiers have fallen back because they're afraid and David is asking questions of the soldiers around him. Why are you standing here? Why are you afraid of Goliath? Don't you know we're God's people? What does the guy who get who kills Goliath? And that's where we hit the play button and pick up the story. When David's oldest brother Eliab heard him talking to the soldiers, he got very mad at David. Why did you come down here, he said. Who is watching those few sheep for you in the wilderness? I know how arrogant you are and your devious plan. You came down just to see the battle. I mean, wow. Eliab explodes, just jumps in and goes straight for, the, for his baby brother's jugular. Basically, here's what Eliab says. David, you are an insignificant and worthless person. You're totally out of your league here. Who in the world do you think you are to come here and start asking questions like those? You've got this tiny little flock of sheep to watch, and they're not even yours, they're dad's sheep. You're an arrogant kid. You have no idea what you're talking about. There's something devious behind what you're doing, and you're just here for the show, you worthless little nothing. Bang. I bet that stung. Have you ever had someone accuse you, insult you like that? I mean, it just felt like that person reached into your chest and ripped out your heart, and their attack on you distracted you. It hurt, didn't it? Words can hurt deeply. They can be life-taking words, words that stay with us for a long, long, long time. Some of you still to this day can remember hurtful things that were said to you as a child. Or maybe what someone said to you years ago as an adult. Words that made you feel small, insignificant, like no one would notice if suddenly, poof, you disappeared. Here's what I want you to know. Get this if you don't remember anything else from today. Listen closely. It may hurt you, but don't let it hinder you. Did you hear that? I mean, really hear that? It may hurt you, but don't let it hinder you. Don't let the attacks shift your focus. If you do, 
They will rob you of your future. Can you imagine how much Eliab's words must have hurt David? How he feels being publicly belittled. Can you imagine that pain? Uh, we guess you can because you've felt that pain. Here's what I know. David's battle against Goliath, one of the greatest stories of history, would have never happened and the course of history would have been changed if David had let what his brother said distract him and shift his focus. That's why it's critical to have a focused heart like David's. David stays focused and here's what he says to Eliab. David said, what have I done now? I mean, can't you just hear the exasperation in David's voice? What have I done this time? Obviously, this isn't the first time that Eliab has gone after David, David and, and ver verbally attacked him. We know that feeling too, don't we? When it seems we can do nothing right in the eyes of someone who's part of our life, uh, maybe a sibling or a coworker, a boss, a, a partner, a spouse, it becomes exhausting, doesn't it? What have I done now? David is tired of being treated like this by his big brother. Then David adds, is there not a cause? I mean, like he says, really, really big brother? Is this what you wanna focus on right now? I was asking some questions because to me, it sure seems like there's a cause we need to be focused on. You know, how do we put an end to this giant who is intimidating and humiliating the people of God? Listen, it's the cause that keeps us focused on the right fight. It's the cause that keeps us focused on the right fight. David could have fought this verbal fight with his brother, but he doesn't. To have fought with Eliab would have been a distraction. Instead, David stays focused on the cause, the fight that matters. And here's what David does. He turned away from him and toward another and spoke in the same way. David turns away. He literally turns his back to his brother because Eliab has become a distraction to the cause and is interrupting his focus. Here's something that's crucial for you to get. Sometimes, to stay focused, you have to literally turn away from the distraction. Not just ignore it, but turn your back on it. David turns away from Eliab and toward another soldier and asks the exact same questions. Why are you standing here? Why are you afraid of Goliath? Don't you know we're God's people? What does the guy get who kills Goliath? David turns away to stay focused on the fight that matters. That's because focus means you only fight the fights that matter. I bet most of you have lived long enough to know this. Not every fight matters. If every fight mattered, then 50 years later, Mike and I would remember what we were fighting about, but neither of us does. On the other hand, all of us remember the story of the fight between David and Goliath because it mattered. I mean, it really mattered. But the fight between David and Goliath, we, we don't remember it. You may have never even heard about it before today. Why? Because David knows that fight doesn't matter. So the questions we have to wrestle with are these. Which fights matter? What's worth focusing on? Well, to help answer those questions, let me take you for just a moment to an event from the life of Jesus. One day, Jesus returns to his hometown of Nazareth. It's where he grew up. And on the Sabbath, he goes to the synagogue. It's his habit. It's just a normal part of his life. He's attended this synagogue hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times before. But this time when he gets there, he's not just attending, he's been invited to teach. So he stands up to read. The synagogue attendant hands him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolls the scroll until he gets to the place he's looking for, and then Jesus reads this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When he finishes reading, Jesus rolls up the scroll, hands it back to the attendant, and sits down. Because in the first century, rabbis always sat down to teach. Now, at this point, everyone in the synagogue is locked on. They know this scripture is what their great prophet Isaiah had said the Messiah would do when he came. They wonder, what will the rabbi teach us about this? Jesus looks at them and says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is what Jesus, the Messiah, would fight for, 
stay focused on. Distractions would not divert him. Jesus is focused on the fight to get some good news to the poor, those who've lost in the competitive race to the top. Jesus is focused on the captives who are not just locked up but locked out of life because of who they are and to know that even if they're not just like me, Jesus still wants them to discover a sense of normalcy. Jesus is focused on the blind, people with medical needs who can't help themselves uh, to, uh, to get the help they need, and focused on the fight for the oppressed, those who have been pushed down, pushed back, and pushed away simply because they are different than. Different than what? Different than those who hold the power. Because when those with power look at a person and think they are less than because they are different than, that's oppression. The poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed, that was Jesus' agenda, the pinpoint focus of his life. He said it himself. So, which fights matter? What's worth focusing on? Well, there may be others, but I happen to believe where Jesus focused is a pretty good place to start. The poor, the captives, the blind, and the oppressed are all worth our time, our energy, our attention, and a focused heart because it's the heart that matters. Let's pray together. God, as we move through life, we're asking for your help. We ask you to help us have a focused heart, a heart that was focused like David's, that didn't let distractions divert him, that he knew which fights mattered and those were the ones he gave his attention to. And help us to have a focused heart like Jesus that cares for others so deeply. And we'll celebrate a focused heart because it really is the heart that matters. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen. Well, just let me take a moment to say thanks again for joining us online today. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week, either online or on campus. Either way, it's always great to be with you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.